Hello everyone and welcome back to another Specimen Saturday special. And we are here with some more clips from our archives. These clips are actually from last June, a year ago this month, when my wonderful darling and I went to visit the North Carolina Zoo. At the time, I didn't really have the best camera. This is still just my little phone camera, so I was not able to get the close-up shots of, you know, crocodile nostrils and the tail of the bobcat that I wanted, but these are still some pretty entertaining little shots that show little snippets of the many, many species of animal that you can actually find at the North Carolina Zoo. And I found myself digging through these again this coming week because I'm just so excited for our upcoming move. Our move will put us much closer to the zoo and I'm really hoping that means I will have more opportunities to go to the North Carolina Zoo, which is in Asheboro, North Carolina and absolutely beautiful, so that I can interview a lot more of the zookeepers, I can really get to know some of these animals and their species. I might be able to speak with some specialists who specialize in researching the amazing diversity of the natural world that is offered right here in this one little zoo. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I wanted to share some of these snippets with you guys too. I'm not going to live in the same town as the zoo, but I'm still living closer and it's always a good idea, especially with the strain and the uncertainties of a move coming up, to have something really fun that you can either look back on or look forward to, or in this case, do both. And I have been to this zoo twice now, and I cannot wait to go as a more regular member, maybe a yearly member who can pop over there. It's only going to be about an hour's drive with traffic and just get lots of footage for you. And it's kind of tied in to how much I love just sharing the natural world with you. This is another opportunity in the future for me to go somewhere where I can go and find some of these amazing creatures of the natural world and bring them to you guys so that we can really get a good look at them. Some of you guys may never really be able to look up close at a scarlet uh, isis, for example, or maybe you won't be able to see a red wolf. And thankfully the North Carolina Zoo does have those. But I thought I'd also take just a second, since we're talking about the zoo so much, to make a quick comment on zoos. And most of you guys know, clearly as Siri, the pixel zookeeper, the keeper of pixelated animals and some real animals, that I think zoos are pretty awesome. However, I don't think all zoos are pretty awesome. And animal welfare is one of the biggest things that I advocate for. And a lot of you guys who will have been watching for a long time know that. You know that I'm vegan, you know that I love biology, you know that I respect the food cycle that we have in our planet, but I also understand just how, how fragile ecosystems can be and that I have a lot of opinions <laughs> when it comes to animal welfare, basically. To put that in a nutshell, a very tiny nutshell for a huge subject. And one of the places that animal welfare can often get pretty tricky is these beautiful institutions, these zoos. A lot of the zoos are both research and for-profit institutions, and wherever that profit becomes a big focus, you always have to look closely at how people are managing their wildlife. And there's zoos everywhere. When I lived in Texas, you'll actually find people who will call their own backyard ranch. And in Texas, you can legally own lions and tigers and bears and more uh, if you have the space. And the space requirements are not very high. You don't have to have special permits the way you do in most other states in the United States. So actually, unfortunately, all of those little independent farms represent more tigers in Texas than actually exist in the wild. So there are more tigers in captivity in Texas alone than there are in the wild. And the vast majority of those tigers are not well taken care of and they're not happy and they are often removed from uh, abusive situations and put into very overcrowded rescue sanctuaries that just don't have the room that the animals deserve. So how do you know the difference between a zoo that might call itself a zoo but not actually take good care of its animals and a zoo that is trying to be at the highest peak of a educational institution and animal welfare and conservation and even making a little profit on the side to show what a profitable business they can make out of the model of education and enrichment. 
Well, there's a program in the United States called the American Zoo Association, and it has exceptionally rigorous standards. It is a good starting point. I think that the requirements of the AZA, the American Zoo Association as it's known, are a great baseline of expectations for zoos such as these. And this zoo, the North Carolina Ashboro Zoo, does meet the AZA uh, qualifications and where they can get more money, where they can raise more funds, they expand and take very good care of their animals and I'm really happy about that. They've had a lot of trouble keeping their polar bears happy lately, but it, it makes me feel good to know that the places that we might get to go soon are places that really put a ton of effort into taking care of their animals. So when you are looking for a zoo to go to, in uh, the United States especially, try to make sure it is AZA certified first because you want to go somewhere where you know that the animal's welfare is going to be at the forefront of their concern. And the Accreditation Commission, who evaluates the zoos and aquariums to make sure they meet AZA standards, are very, very, very meticulous. It takes months for them just to fill out the questionnaires and do the evaluations, and easily half a year for them just to go through all of the data that they collect from a zoo or aquarium and determine if they're going to get accredited or not. They also offer ongoing classes and training for the zoos and aquariums to, to go through so that they can make sure that the animals' living environment, social grouping, health, nutrition, enrichment, natural behavior, variation in daily, like, daily uh, routine, all of those are very important things for the animals and they try to make sure that everybody in their system who is accredited lives up to those standards. So I highly recommend making sure that your next visit to a zoo is to an AZA accredited one because you know that they're going to take good care of their animals and those intense details. Every single one of these animals is so beautiful and marvelous and unique and that is what is so much fun about being able to go and see them and, and get a glimpse at their lives. But it also is what makes taking care of them so difficult because you have their space requirements their enrichment, a specific nutrition that varies not only among the species, but the age, the, the sex, the uh, life stage of the different species, whether or not the seasons are at a certain point of time, its health. You need to think about like its social groupings and so many other things. And I really hope moving forward, when we, when well, I guess we <laughs> move to my new home down further inside of North Carolina, then we'll be able to go and interview the zookeepers at the North Carolina Zoo more about all of these amazing details and what it means to really take care of these guys. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I cannot wait to share more with you and more adventures coming up very soon after we move. And I will see you guys next week for another Specimen Saturday special. Bye-bye guys and remember, stay curious!